Hey guys, welcome back to the Binger. Geralt of Rivia has made the leap to the small screen thanks to Netflix's The Witcher. Henry Cavill has brought everyone's favorite monster slayer to life in a wonderful way. So it's not difficult to see why there's such a buzz around the series. We may have only been gifted a limited number of episodes so far, but we've seen a lot in that time. From dastardly mages to the legendary Kikimoras, Geralt has covered a lot of ground. So come with us and toss a coin to your Witcher as we rank some of the show's most impressive monsters. Sylvans Unlike some of the other monsters we're about to meet, Sylvans are mostly harmless. They're kind of like Mr. Tumnus from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. They don't really want to do bad things, but are easily manipulated. In the show, Torque is a creature that Geralt is sent to deal with as he keeps pestering the local townsfolk. As he's just a little bit of a nuisance and not a monster, Geralt spares him and soon learns that he is working on behalf of the elves. Does he look a little bit scary? Sure, but who doesn't when they're busy doing someone else's bidding? Other than that, Torque is kind of endearing if you're into the whole horny goat vibe. It's not surprising that human folk dub Sylvan's devils, as they really do bear a striking resemblance to the stereotypical image of Satan. They've got cloven hooves, hairy legs, and everything. On a scale of one to threatening, these guys really couldn't organize a kegger in a frat house. They're still an important part of the Witcherverse, though. Renfri When we first meet Geralt, he wanders into a tavern in the town of Blaviken and exchanges a few words with a girl. Want some breakfast? We don't think that much of it until later on when a wizard called Stregobor hires our guy to take out a fallen princess called Renfri. Why? He believes that she is evil incarnate because she was born during an eclipse. Not that these people are heavily superstitious or anything. Geralt later has a brief romantic encounter with the princess, yes, the same girl from the tavern, who tells an entirely different story. She asks him to join her side, but he says no, and she ventures out to seek her own revenge on the wizard. Is she evil? It doesn't seem like it, but Stregobar is certainly convinced of her power. She puts up a decent fight, but in the end, Geralt begrudgingly ends her life. Was she really all the wizard said she was? Eh, we'll never know, but she certainly maintained supremacy over her band of criminals. Urchin Here's a cursed being for you. Poor Urchin only wanted to marry the love of his life. It would have all been well and good if he wasn't cursed with looking like a hedgehog. As far as evildoers go, Urchin was about as harmless as a fly. When Queen Callan finally agrees to the match after trying and failing to spear her daughter's suitor, the curse is lifted. It's a magical union that results in the birth of Princess Ciri years later. Although Urchin and Princess Pavetta don't get to see her grow up, which is always a bummer. Could Urchin have been harmful? Well, only if you got too close and you accidentally got a spike in the eye. Other than that, he was just part of the wonderful, weird, magical world that's the Witcher. In fact, we would say that Queen Kalanth was more of a monster than he ever was. And she never even had a curse. She just had a very strange way of showing her daughter how much she loved her. One that involved bloodshed and angering neighboring lands. The Assassin in episode 4, we finally get a deeper insight into Yennefer as the series skips forward three decades. Yennefer's doing her duty escorting Queen Callus of Lyria when, all of a sudden, an assassin shows up. He hasn't stopped by for tea and cake, but rather to get rid of the queen and her newborn child. Yennefer opens portals and they hop through, but the assassin is relentless in his pursuit. Eventually, despite the mage's best efforts, the assassin wins out. While we don't get to see the full extent of this guy's power, it's clear that he's a confident dude that takes everything in his stride. He also had this big ol' mutant ant-looking thing that looked like it meant business. Wouldn't want to wrestle with that thing in the dark, would ya? Bonus points for efficiency, too, judging by how quickly they destroyed the Queen's soldiers. It was all over and done within a hot minute, before anyone knew what was going on. Portals are no match for the assassin, either, who follows them wherever they go until the task is done. Dopplers Picture this. Your trusted lifetime friend and confidant comes to get you after everything you know and love has been destroyed. Sounds like a ray of hope in an otherwise terrible world, right? Princess Siri looks like the cat that got the cream when Mouse Sack turns up to take her to safety. But alas, it's not Mouse Sack at all, but a Doppler hired by the opposition to capture her. Dopplers can take the form of anyone they want, making themselves look and sound exactly like them. It's foolproof, unless you happen to catch them in a lie like Siri. This Doppler is particularly evil and conniving, seeming to take genuine pleasure in its evil deeds. 
Is there anything worse than thinking you're talking to a trusted confidant only to find out that it's the manifestation of evil wearing a different skin? Eh, we've all got an ex like that. But the less said about that, the better. Thankfully, they don't go around trying to lead us to our untimely moral ends. So at least there's that. But before we delve deeper into the world of mythical monsters, be sure to subscribe to The Binger and turn your notifications on. We all know how pesky YouTube can be. If you're watching on mobile, you can do this by going into settings. The Djinn Aladdin may have got on famously with his blue bottled genie, but djinns are a different story entirely. Both are housed in an object and slaves to their masters for three wishes, but djinns are very mischievous and incredibly dangerous spirits. You wouldn't want to find yourself trapped in a lamp with one, that's for sure. When Geralt and Hoskier fish one out of a lake in episode 5, they think they've hit the payload. All Geralt wants is to make a wish to be able to sleep, but the bottle gets broken and the gin is released. As you might expect, all hell breaks loose, especially when Yennefer tries to use it to regain her fertility and almost bites the dust because of it. There's a distinct air of malice around the dark entity. Even though it has no face or form, it's clear that gins are not something to be toyed with if you want a carefree existence. Wishes might be tempting, but isn't living another day just as good? Who wants infinite riches and immortality anyway? Yennefer Okay, we get it, Yennefer isn't strictly a monster, but she's not your average Jane either. Before becoming a fully-fledged mage, Yennefer was born with powers that she learned to harness. It's not just her exceptional control over her magic that makes her intriguing, but also her emotions. Yennefer has demonstrated that she's better than your usual TV witch. She can concoct potions that turn parties into frenzied displays of passion. Plus, she's willing to put herself in the line of fire to get what she wants, no matter the cost. Her transformation without any anesthetic proves that, as does her relentless pursuit to get her fertility back. She's powerful in more ways than one. Her powers are secondary to her hard-as-nails personality. Geralt knows it, which is why he's so enamored with her, whether he would ever admit it or not. Yennefer is one of the very few people that the Witcher cares about, too, which means she has a hold over him that others don't. Kikimura No one wants to deal with battling huge, scary creatures for a living now, do they? Surely Geralt might like to retire from the biz and just sit quietly in a tavern brooding over a jug of mead. Or whatever it is he drinks. Maybe it's the tears of his enemies? Unfortunately for him, he's stuck with a gig. In the very first episode, we see him come up against a Kikimura, and it ain't pretty. Imagine eight-legged freaks crossed with the Hunchback of Notre Dame. These spidery beings are a force to be reckoned with and appear in the Witcher games where we learn their downfall. Insectoid oil. Go figure. Sadly for the otherworldly menace, Geralt makes quick work of him in a dingy swamp. That's not to say that the beast didn't put a good fight, though, pinning our Witcher underwater for an uncomfortable amount of time. Even Roach backs away for a moment, concerned that he's going to be made a meal out of. The Kikimura gets a special mention for being Geralt's foe in the opening scene, giving him a chance to show off his skills. Striga of all the monsters we've ever witnessed both on screen and off, the Striga is one of the most formidable. The ghastly being wasn't just your average baddie, but the daughter of Princess Ada of Temeria. The poor child was cursed when she was still in the womb, meaning she was born a Striga. Geralt, to give the girl a chance at life, puts himself in the firing line and vows to break the curse. It's no easy task given the impeccable strength of the creature, who is completely feral. Not only is its physical appearance daunting, but the high-pitched scream that the Striga emits is enough to send anyone running for the hills. It's a close call, but Geralt manages to lock himself inside the princess's resting place until the very third crow of the rooster. As he's kept her from her tomb until dawn, the curse is finally broken. But not before she takes a good bite out of her savior. Maybe the most worrying thing about Astriga at all is that anyone with the right knowledge could create one. The Golden Dragon Dragons have long since held an important part in fantasy shows. Lest we forget that a large portion of Game of Thrones centered on Daenerys and her babies? The Witcher wouldn't be in the genre if it didn't have at least one winged creature to its name. The Golden Dragon may not have posed a threat to Geralt in the series, but it's an extremely powerful being. Only a fool would underestimate it. After all, even Yennefer, who is a whiz with the dark arts, wants to seek it out as she believes it will make her fertile again. When a mage like her goes out of her way to pursue something, even if it's all in vain, you've got to take notice. In Episode 6, Rare Species, Geralt finds himself on a dragon hunt conducted by Borsch, who turns out to be a golden dragon himself. 
These special creatures can take the form of anything they want, making them a potentially lethal enemy and even better ally. And there you have it. What do you think? Would you go up against the Golden Dragon or take a stroll through the lair of a Kikimura? Sound off in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching.